Oh, is your wife just not a very good hairstylist? No, she is great. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're talking about my band. Why can't we talk about your band? I know. It's kind of embarrassing, I guess. <laughs> it's awkward. <laughs> why, why don't you send me something? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Look, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is the first time. It's so awkward. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to make it awkward. Yeah, actually, you played with my friends in Japan, the Hathaways, I think. You remember them? Those guys are great. Yeah, the, the bass player is big, you know, Daichan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Though, you know what? Uh, because I was watching them, uh -huh. and uh, Mikey Erg, I was, I sent a message to Mikey Erg while I was watching them. I'm like, man, these guys, you know, obviously listen to some Ergs, uh -huh. but their songs are a little different, and they're, the songs are great. And the video of them playing to Mikey? Uh, I can't remember if it was a video or a, it might have been a video. Uh -huh. And then Mikey came here after and we went for dinner and I was telling him, but I didn't have, because the Hathaways gave me that, the last CD they put out mm -hmm. uh, before it came out. That CD's great. Yeah. It's like, what, 12 minutes long or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. The one I have anyway. Mm -hmm. I have the, the, the album, I guess. They put out the album right after your tour. So I went to like, a couple months after you in Japan, and then they put out mm -hmm. their new album. So that sounds really incredible. I think you have to check them out. The new, the new stuff is great. No, that's the one I have. They, they gave me the CD before it came the, out. The orange one? Uh, I don't know. So the cover is orange, their album. Oh, no, it's like... The little kid eating cake? No, it's like basically a home burned CD that they drew wow. a little picture of me on. Wow, that's so, awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's, I think it's that record. Because this is a very short record, right? Yeah, it's like only five yeah. or six songs in it. Yeah. My dinner? I can figure it yeah. out. <laughs> I, know, I, know the, I don't know the song titles because I don't have the song titles. Okay. Talking about records, is it true that Sub Pop once trash your record to Garbage? Yeah. The, really? Uh, well, I think that was pretty common. I think back then, like in the 90s, vinyl wasn't really selling. Mm -hmm. So I think they just threw it in the garbage. And uh, because, you know, they had to make room for, I don't know, some other band. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so our friend who worked at the label found the uh, records in the garbage when she was leaving uh, work. She was like the last one leaving. And so, yeah, when you walked out of the Sub Pop, I don't know what it's still like, but the entrance was kind of where the garbage cans were. So mm -hmm. there was kind of like the staircase and the garbage cans were on the side of the staircase. And she was walking out and looked in and saw our records in there. So oh, she boxed God. them up and then FedExed them to us. Oh. And then we forgot about them up until a couple of years ago. And then, so we have like lots of sealed copies of the first record. <laughs> so... How was your relationship with South Pop, basically? I mean, like, you know, I, I watched your interview videos when you were on South Pop. You, you look like, it was like pretty much fine, but how could that happen, you know? Uh, it was, you know, it was good. I think half the, are we doing the interview now? Yeah, I guess I'm recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, the, um, uh, yeah, it was like, I think, you know, there was probably half the people there, or maybe less than half the people there liked us. The other more than half probably didn't like us. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, but I mean, it was a really good experience. It was good to move on and, and uh, especially, you know, go to Honest Ons and Fat, like that was kind of pretty great. Already aimed you when you were in South Pop or like, have you been in contact with Fat while you were in South Pop? Yeah, well, we didn't know. We had a manager at mm -hmm. the time, and he, like, basically, it was the 90s, and there was lots of money flying around, like, major labels were, um, you know, just throwing money everywhere <laughs> at every band. Yeah, yeah. I remember we were in L.A. playing a show, and this woman said, well, my, my label is signing, you know, 400 or I think it was 600 bands this year. No and way. We'd like you to be one of them. And we're like, why the hell would we want to be one of 600 bands, you know? But uh, 
yeah, so um, we had met Lagwagon, we had toured with them, and we didn't know anything about Fat Records. It wasn't a thing here in Calgary. Like nobody really, you know, knew them. No effects, never played here. Lagwagon, nobody played here. Mm -hmm. And so it was just unknown to <laughs> us. We met Lagwagon in 94. Do you know the band Pansy Division? Yeah, I know them. Yeah, so we were on tour with Pansy Division. After that tour ended, we met up with Lagwagon. And then uh, Joey from Lagwagon told Mike about us. And then he had made an offer to our manager who didn't tell us because mm -hmm. Fat Records doesn't give out advances. And, uh, but Sub Pop did because it was, had uh, Nirvana and uh, Warner money. That they had yeah, lots of money. So anyway, that's what happened. And then, so when we went to Honest Don's, Mike was like, why didn't you even like consider my offer? And like, we were like, what offer? <laughs> we didn't know. So yeah, that's kind of how that turned out. So we would have obviously gone to Fat, I think. Although I'm glad we went to Sub Pop because people are endlessly fascinated about why the hell we would be yeah, on Sub Pop. Actually, yeah, that, that was like the first thing that came into my mind, like Chicks Dig It on Sub Pop. Wow. <laughs> what the hell was going on, you know, like that. I can't explain it. <laughs> guy just saw you live and then right away signed you after that? Yeah, I think uh, we obviously made an impression, some kind of impression. I don't know if, what kind of impression, but, uh, and then, uh, yeah, it kind of happened. Um, while we were on tour, things were kind of happening. Mm -hmm. And so we were, this is before the internet, so we would call back and then our manager would be like, I've been trying to talk to you guys. This happened, this happened, and they're offering this or whatever, and all this stuff. We're like, you know, trying to have fun. And then all they want to talk about is business and record deals and all this <laughs> other <laughs> stuff. I read somewhere in the internet, it's probably like a, uh, a scanned copy of a zine or I don't know what, what it is. It said that you used to sell, you used to sell stuff on eBay as you know, that I used? Yeah, you said like KJ29, uh, no, 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 and then sell many things at eBay. Oh, did you, did I did you... sell some stuff on eBay, but I think uh, that would have been maybe 20 years ago, I think I sold some stuff on eBay. Yeah, I'm wondering, did you do it for living? No, I, I, what happened was, uh, I've <laughs> never been asked that before. Um, uh, I was, I lived at home. Mm -hmm. uh, until like, I think I was 28. And because my parents were retired, they were traveling. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted somebody to stay at the house. And so I was like, oh, I'll stay at the house. And then, <laughs> uh, and the, or we would be on tour. So we were on tour all the time. So they were like, just don't worry about it. When you're done touring, you can, you know, worry about finding a place to live then. So when I did, when we kind of stopped touring, I had this house full of shit that I had collected, <laughs> you know, for, I don't know, 25 years. Oh, and we're talking like, yeah, like, you know, just BMX magazines and <laughs> I don't know, just like <laughs> crap. And so, you know, why did somebody buy something off me or something or? Yeah, totally. Like, did, did you make a living with that? Like it says like you, you actually sell something on eBay for a living. <laughs> No, I just, I was just like clearing out all my stuff because I had to move. I see. And so, yeah, but it, but I did at the time, eBay was awesome in the, mm -hmm. in the late nineties or whatever, I guess yeah, it was true, the late nineties uh, because people are like, I just click, click on this button. And then this like package comes to my house. And yeah. that was <laughs> like, you know, this, you know, amazing thing to them. So yeah, like, shit that would never sell on the internet now <laughs> sold then what was the most expensive thing you've ever laid on ebay <laughs> ever sold on ebay yeah yeah probably guitars or something like you mm. know your rickenbacker no i haven't sold that. <laughs> yeah. but i'll take offers on it if anybody <laughs> uh the stretching feet uh, legs in your okay what, what what's the intention behind that Oh, this is kind of like, it's, you know, it's kind of fun when you're young to okay. do that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know, some of my favorite guitar players that had their legs spread out and you kind of, <coughs> you can 
get more into it or whatever. Like power stance. Then, <laughs> yeah, you know, with power is the yeah. perfect. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Power. <coughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, after a while, you know, your hips start to get sore, mm. and uh, you start to kind of, you know, it's not as comfortable. So you kind of go up a little bit, legs come a little closer together, and then. So I'm, I've kind of found the right, you know, not too far, not standing up, right, kind of right in the middle. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, because if, if you're playing guitar and you're standing like that for a whole show, no problem, you can move around. But if you're playing guitar, singing Aww. and standing like that, <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother deal. <laughs> Did you ever get hurt from doing that? I actually, my hips were sore. No, I mean, like, like when, you, had, when you play live, like, oh, you got, like... Pull a muscle or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, we used to, like, stretch before shows. Uh, <laughs> that was the one thing we proper. did. We didn't practice. <laughs> yes, we were very uh, responsible with our bodies. So, but yeah, I think uh, no injuries. I Like, I've fallen and had gotten hit by things and stuff, electrocuted. <laughs> but I had never uh, pulled a muscle. <laughs> Uh, talking about Canada, you know, it's always been associated with one person. It's Nardwar, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So He's a genius. I, yeah, I, I love his interviews, though, like every almost like punk rocker interview from him is always fascinating. But have you been interviewed by him? Yeah, not like, I don't know if we, I don't think we've been interviewed like on TV, but we, mm-hmm. we were on his radio show. Ah, I see. Uh, like, I don't know, 92, 93. Mm, probably like the same Something thing like with the Brackens, right? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Nardwar is amazing. Like he's mm-hmm. a great guy, very sweet guy. He's not a, uh, yeah, he's just a really genuine guy and incredibly smart. Have you met him in person? Like, you know? Yeah, I know. Or... I know him. Yeah. Like he's. But you know him personally? He, Yeah, he doesn't, I, I mean, I wouldn't say we hang out or anything, but mm-hmm. we, uh, like, you know, the Calgary scene and the Vancouver scene, We're like Western Canada. And I think there's lots of uh, like, or at least def- there definitely was back in the day, like lots of connection between the two scenes, I think. Mm-hmm. Is it always like that outside the camera? Like, is it all a character? Uh, I would say, I mean, yeah, that's who he is. I think uh, <laughs> it's not an act. Oh, uh, really? You know, when you're having a conversation with him, I mean, he's maybe not as like on TV, mm-hmm. but yeah, his mind is going a mile a minute like all the time mm-hmm. putting making connections and it's uh he is really like like a national treasure mm, I, see. Mm-hmm. i haven't seen him in a long time but uh yeah i mean he's uh yeah he's an incredible guy about your song great legs <laughs> yeah yeah who do you think uh, someone who fits the stereotype of great teeth great legs great body if she has a bad attitude on, on this day <laughs> Well, you know, I'm gonna have to say my wife. Oh, really? <laughs> mm-hmm. And she uh, was in a band called the Riff Randalls. Do you know the Riff Randalls? I never heard of it. Man, you would love the Riff Randalls if you mm-hmm. like. I'm assuming you like our band. If you like our band, love the Riff Randalls. Okay. Yeah. But was that song like written for someone else back in the days? Uh, it was kind of. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> too long ago. I don't think so. I think it was just like, maybe. Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Because I've never seen you live. It, too bad. <laughs> yeah, you will because we're coming to Indonesia. Because you, well, you haven't invited us yet. But when you invite <laughs> us, we're coming. Uh, no, but we uh, we play that song because uh, it's easy to play. <laughs> really, it's easy to play. <laughs> well, it's one of the reasons. I, I like the song too, but it's, you know. Okay. So anyway, if you actually played football in high school, what would happen to your life? <laughs> you know, it's funny. We talk about that except with hockey because mm-hmm. I always wanted to play hockey mm-hmm. uh, growing up, but my parents, like, we didn't have the money. And it was like, uh, it's like, there's kind of like a cult there, at least there was back in the day, a culture of kind of like, Uh, hooliganism amongst hockey parents mm-hmm. it's pretty rough and my parents uh, didn't want anything to do with that so um, I think that if if I would have played hockey it would have made my life way shittier I think <laughs> being in a band 
has actually been the best, you know, thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but I think, and I like, you know, hockey a lot mm -hmm. and it's fun to play. I'm not very good at all because um, I never played, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super glad I wouldn't want anything to have changed. I'm happy with the way things turned out. <laughs> okay. And so how long have you been in a band? Probably like 15 years or so, yeah. So you started when you are 15 years old? Actually, I played this local band, a funky band, you know, like playing Beatles and stuff, like from 10, I guess. You know? 10 years old, you started playing music? Yeah, because I didn't know what anything else to do. I suck at sports. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. Okay. So 10 years old, you started, so when, how old are you when you got your, are you a guitarist? I, for this band, yeah, I play guitar and sing. <laughs> Dude, that's awkward. How old were you when you got your first guitar? First time I got my guitar, probably like, mm, maybe around seven or eight, but I haven't played it yet, yeah. So wow. my, yeah, my parents bought it for me because like, you know, I play this guitar, it's cute with you with guitar. <laughs> Your you know? parents bought you a guitar. Yeah, so it's cute, you know? but I didn't play it until like 15 or like 16, yeah. Yeah, I think I was eight, maybe at 18 when I got my first guitar mm -hmm. and my parents were not happy at all. <laughs> no way they would have bought me a guitar. Now they think it's kind of cute or whatever. <laughs> Smiling awkwardly right over there. <laughs> <laughs> did she did she cut your hair? No, I never let her cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I never cut my hair by anyone else in my life. I always cut it by myself. You cut your own hair. You, your wife is a, a hairdresser, and you cut your own hair. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never liked it. <laughs> You know, it's funny, uh, Billy, who's our guitar player, mm -hmm. his wife is, uh, has a hair salon too. Oh, I see. And uh, so but she cuts my hair, although you can't tell. Mm -hmm. I haven't really had it cut lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, uh, but she cuts Billy's hair. Mm -hmm. Billy lets her, you know, do that. But I she's, see. I don't know, is your wife just not a very good hairstylist? No, she's great. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's good though, that's good. <laughs> I think she, she'll get mad after this, you know. She won't listen she to She can't hear me though, right? <laughs> but I'll, see, I'll show her the video, so you know. No, no, no. She won't listen to Chicks Dig It anymore after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I'm gonna come there and then while we're playing, I mm -hmm. want her to cut my hair. That's awesome. <laughs> you can, <laughs> oh, she's going to the bathroom, okay. Find <laughs> <laughs> any tour after the COVID thing? Well, yeah, eventually, I think when it's safe, I, uh, I think there, yeah, I mean, I miss it a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of things we had to cancel already. So oh, yeah, I can't that's wait. That's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah, we had lots of things kind of in the works or whatever. And then now we're just kind of, you know, I, it's given me a chance to like finish up songs that mm -hmm. have been kind of like half done or whatever, but yeah, I want to get back to it. So the new stuff, is it going to be an album or what? Yeah, I think so. I think like for a while there, I was, it just seemed like everybody was doing this kind <laughs> of like um, rotation of like endless album, 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 <laughs> like every year kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I would say like if, you know, a lot of them to my ear, uh, it would be better if they did album, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know because um because uh there'd be like you know two or three good songs you know and then if they kind of waited around a couple years there might be a full album of good songs mm -hmm. that's like not that. a bad idea huh yeah so yeah i think there's been a lot of things that have kind of made it tough like you know kids like none of the guys want to go on tour they want to be at home mm -hmm. and uh so i think now that everybody's kids are old enough that they can, you know, go to bed at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not, you know, now it's like a little bit more lifestyle uh, friendly. The band is mm -hmm. kind of, we're able to kind of do that again. So, yeah. So for us, it was like uh, album. And nothing. <laughs> uh, EP. 
right? And then it's mm-hmm. like what six or seven songs, and then uh, one that 2012 sort of album, That's sort right. of you know all these <laughs> things. And so, and a lot of people were mad because that wasn't a record and I don't know what that is. And that's confusing to me. And then, so, but now I think we're definitely like, uh, we probably have two or maybe three albums. Have you heard anything like any band from Indonesia before? No. Really? What's, what's like the Brian Adams of Indonesia? <laughs> a Brian Adams? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. Like, just like your popular... The guy that you know everybody likes can sing a lot, writes good songs. Who's that guy? Mm, there's this or girl. There's this old man, <laughs> basically. His name is Faris R M. R M. Yeah, Faris R M. Yeah. Uh, okay. So he's like pretty much he's pretty popular, but you know he's old. So he's like the pioneers of the new wave movement in Indonesia. Like so, so he was kind of big in the late seventies. Yeah, his, 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 he was big in the 70s, but these days people are kind of doing the revival thing. So he's there again, you know, he's back at it again. Do you like him? I like him. I love him. Yeah, he's awesome. Cool. RM, I'm going to write that down here on my little list of things. <laughs> Fariz RM. Brandung RM. Yeah, Fariz, you know, F-A-R-I-Z, Z, yeah. Yeah. RM. R. Um, yeah, that, that's, he's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then, so, like, what about, like, uh, what what would our style of music, where would that fit in in Indonesia, like, super down at the bottom, like, for fans only kind of thing? Basically, our kind of music, this kind of pop punk. <laughs> yeah. So, is that, like, a big, is there a big scene there, or, like, mm, smaller? Or? Not really. I mean, like, if you can, if I'm not mistaken, there are only, like, 20 bands play our kind of pop punk, you know. Mm-hmm. The no effects, the fat rack thing is still big in, in here, so we're kind of pretty much like the underdogs in here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so if you ever come here, but you know, you're in fat rack, so people will recognize you right off the bat, you know. Well, that's yeah, I'd love, I'd love to be recognized. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, no, I think uh, like here's kind of the same way, like in in Canada, Mm -hmm. there's definitely like, you know, certain bands have like a big following or whatever, but I wouldn't say that this style of music is like on vogue or anything like that, but, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's also changed. Like, you know, when I started getting into bands, uh, you would go to a club just to see any kind of band. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then it started breaking up into these weird, like, you know, then it was punk, then it was pop punk, then it was like, like 77 punk, like all these different kind of, they kept chopping up all the, the genres until there was like tiny scenes for each one kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I liked it better when people would just kind of go see everything. Yeah. You know, I don't know what that's like if, or if it's like that where you are, but. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, she, she has, to go to work i have to take her to work now <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna get back at your email thank you so much for your time kj yeah thank you yeah. Probably, like but honestly like if uh if you think it would be worthwhile for us to come mm-hmm. we'll we'll come and yeah. uh but if not you know all we have to do is be asked and we will be there like i've said 14 mm-hmm. times during this interview <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you in the email about the details okay Sounds good. Okay, cool. So thank you. So Thanks much. for doing this. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Hope to meet you in person soon. Thank you so much. Yes. Yay, yay. Me too. Let your wife cut your hair. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not in a million years. <laughs> Talk soon. Stay safe. Yeah, you too, man. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.